Okay, this is a video to accompany, to accompany the um, simulation experiment that you're going to be doing this week in class. And so this is what the um, Word document will show up when you um, open it up. Okay, and so it's called the iodine clock reaction. And this reaction um, is so, the, the ending of it is so sudden that it's like an alarm clock. Okay, it actually involves three reactions. The first reaction, or reaction one here, is the one that we'll be studying, okay? And so it's the iodide plus the persulfate goes to form two sulfates plus iodine. Then the iodine, as soon as it's generated, reacts with thiol sulfate to produce more iodide plus um, persulfate, or I'm sorry, thiol sulfate. Um, and so once this reaction, this is going to have a very low concentration, and so it's going to initially going to run out. And when that happens, then the I9 that is reduced, sorry about this, um, that is produced in the first reaction, oops, sorry, the iodine that's produced in the first reaction reacts with starch to form a blue black complex. Okay, and so these three reactions, this is going to tell me when the reaction has basically been, that all of the S2O3 has been complete, has been reacted up, and I can relate that back to the amount of the S2O8. So in this table, you're going to have, uh, or on the sheet, if you go down to page three, um, you have table one, which is where you're going to record your times. You're going to do this at 25 degrees and 45 degrees, okay? And you are going to, and these are the volumes that you use. I should say, I'm having to use Google Chrome for this because of, in order to get the um, applet or the um, plugin to work, I had to use Google Chrome. Okay, but this is what it should open up to. So if it doesn't work on your computer, um, you have to go into. It should flash in there to allow it to do flash. Um, and to ask about Flash, my um, Firefox didn't ask me, but my, my, my uh, Google Chrome did. So this is what you're going to look at. So you have toggle buttons for water. The, this is the thiol sulfate, S2O3, 2 minus, um, with starch. Okay, and so it's, it doesn't have a toggle, so it's the volume of this is always going to be 10 milliliters. This is Ki, and I have two volumes here to choose. I have um, the ammonium persulfate, and I also have two volumes here. When I'm setting this up, my total volume has to be 100 for, in order for it to start the experiment. If you try to start it beforehand, it will give you an error. This is the start button. Here's my temperatures. I'm going to do it at 25 and 45. You can do it at 5, but the procedure that I have found doesn't actually do that. So the directions tell you that once you hit start, as soon as this last solution is pour, is completely poured in, I hit the play button to start recording the time. It's not, okay, so the timer just works independently. And as soon as I see it go from this color, I think it changes to this color, I have run it. Um, that is basically what I'm looking for as the change. Okay, so I'm looking for a change in color inside the speaker here. And when that happens, I want to, again, hit the play um, to stop it. So I want to be able to record the time between when I poured the solution and when the solution changed appearance inside this beaker. Okay. So I'm going to do some calculations. I'm going to refer to table one. Well, table one is just data. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do the calculations in table two. Um, and I'm not going to really discuss table or the conclusions. These are practice problems, much like you have done in your uh, classroom. So I'm not really going to discuss these. Um, here is the uh, determining the rate law. Okay. Here's determining the K, and it's going to ask you to do that for 25 and 45 degrees, and then basically calculating what the activation energy is um, with your two Ks that you calculated in number two. So here's how you walk through some of these calculations. So for table two. Let me go, sorry, not organized here. Okay, so for table two, well, first of all, I want to point out that you're going to see Ki 
and that's the same thing as I minus. You're going to see sodium S2O8, and that's the same thing as S2O8 2 minus. And you see NH4 2 S2O3, and that's the same thing as S2O3 2 minus. So whenever we want to go make solutions, they're inside of our stock room, if you will, where all the chemicals are. Solution, uh, compounds don't exist as um, ions. They only exist as ions once I dissolve them into water. So in order to get an I minus or an iodide ion, I have to dissolve some compound of I. And so Ki, the sodium persulfate, or the ammonium sulfite, thiosulfite, sorry. Um, so for table two, it asks for the concentration of I minus, and this is going to be the initial concentrations, the concentration of S2O8 2 minus, and the concentration of S2O3 2 minus. It asks for the rate at 25 degrees, and it asks for the rate at 45 degrees. Okay, for these calculations right here, I'm going to use something called the dilution equation. When I was mixing these solutions, I didn't add 100 milliliters of any one of these, but the total volume was 100. So they were all a dilution of what was initially in there. So for these, they're all going to be initial. Okay, so I'm going to use the dilution equation, which is M1V1 is equal to M2V2. M1 is the molarity given in the simulation. It tells you what the concentrations are, and that's what you're going to use. V1 is the toggled volume that I use. M2, I'm going to solve for, for all of these. And V2 is the total volume in the beaker. And if you were paying attention earlier, I told you what that's going to be. So I'm going to have to do this calculation nine times. Okay, so I should have three experiments with three different times, and I'm going to have nine different concentrations. Actually, you're going to really have two iodides, you're going to have two S2O8s, two minuses, and this should be the same concentration for all three experiments. Okay, so the other part of this is the rates. Okay, now we're going to... Um, I'm going to go back to writing what the equations were on the sheets as soon as I find this. Okay, I had two I minuses plus S2O8 2 minus goes to form uh, two SO4s 2 minus plus iodine. The iodine then reacted with the S2O3 2 minus to go to form two I minuses again, plus um, S4O6, and there was two of those, I forgot that one, O6, two minuses, okay? So these two relation, these two reactions, I'm using this reaction to remember to monitor my concentration, but this is the one in which I'm doing this. So what we did in the beginning of chapter 13 was to relate the amounts of a chemical equation. So I have if I were to do so, if I was write, to write the rate for the S2O3, it's going to be a negative one half because of it's a negative because it's a reactant, two because or one half because of the two here. The change in S2O3, two minus, over the change in time. I'm going to relate that back to the iodine. So that's also negative, but the coefficient's one, so it's just the change in I2 over the change in time. I relate that back to this equation. Okay, so that's now a product, so it's now the change in I2. It's positive because it's a product over the change in time. And I'm running out of room. The last one then is I want to relate it back to the S2O8. So that's going to be a negative change in S2O8 2 minus over the change in time. 
So I don't really care about these middle steps because of the fact that I was just using it to get from here to there. So the important thing is, and they're both negative, so I'm going to cross out the negatives. So I'm basically that one half of the change in S2O3 concentration over the change in time is equal to the change in S2O8 2 minus over the change in time, which is equal to the rate. So to calculate the rate at 25 degrees and 45 degrees, okay, I'm going to use the times for the three experiments, so I'm going to have six answers here. Two for, I'm mean, sorry, three for each temperature, okay, and I'm going to use this equation here, okay, so it's very important that even though I'm relating it to the S2O3, this right here is the one that I'm going to be using. Because of the change in S2O3 concentration, because it did disappears, and that's what indicates the end of my reaction, is the concentration of S2O3 initially minus zero. So it's the same thing as the S2O3 concentration initially, which is what I calculated in table two up here. Okay, so that's how you fill out. So I'm gonna do basically, um, I'm going to take one half of this concentration divided by the times that I got in table one for the three different experiments at 25 degrees and then I'm going to do the same thing using these concentrations for experiment one divided by the time in experiment one for 45 degrees, experiment two, and experiment three. So I'm going to have six answers there, three for 25 and three for 45. Okay. Um, to determine the rate or so basically like I said I'm not really going to talk about the calculations okay the calculations um, this now number one is just like a practice problem oh, I can't spell okay um, and to do number one, I can use either the 25 degree data or the 45 degree data, but not both. Okay, so stick with either you're going to use all the numbers, the rates from 25 degrees, the concentration, of course, is the same for both temperatures, but I either use the rates for 25 degrees or I use the rates for 45 degrees, but I stick with it and do all three. So you're going to have three, or I'm sorry, you're going to have, so I'm going to use the rates here, okay? And so this is where you have the concentration of I minus over I minus to the M is rate over rate, and I do the problem like that, okay? Uh, number two, once I have my rate law, remember, so rate law is generically rate is equal to K times concentration of I minus to the M, S2O8, two minus to the N, Okay, and you're going to have numbers for both M and N. Okay, so number two, you're going to solve for K. And I want you to find the average K. At 25 degrees. And at 45 degrees. So you're going to have to do the calculation six times and then average into average the 3 for 25 together and average the 3 for 45 degrees. And then once I have those, I'm going to plug that into the Arrhenius equation to solve for the E sub A in number 3. Okay. And what you can do is I would really like you to show me your calculations for number 1, 2, and 3. In that case, you can handwrite them. Um, simply take a picture then of the page one because that's where the name is. Um, you don't really need a 
a picture of page two. It just has that little bit of information. And then page three with the data and these calculations. And then this page here, just to, you can take a picture of those um, and submit those pictures as page one, page two, page three into that um, assignment box that's associated with this lab. If you have any questions, you can always email me. You can call my office number. Um, it rolls over to my cell phone. Just let me know.